we're almost ready to begin our final render. Let's just take a look at a few things and do a few more tweaks here, and then I think we'll be ready. I'm going to enable our render region here, and we will draw a region right around this area here. And what I want to do is look at the graininess level here during this motion blur area where the knees are really moving around quite a bit. We see it's pretty grainy. What I'm going to do is in our Karma render settings, I'm going to increase our primary samples to 36. And that seems to have cleaned it up quite a bit. It's still a bit grainy. We might even choose to use the denoiser on this to help it a little bit more. So if we want the denoiser, we can go into our image output into filters here, and we can choose one of the denoisers. I'm going to use the optics denoiser. And now we see we have a pretty clean image here. I'm going to clear the render region, and let's take a look at this foot area. I'm going to draw a new region right around here. What I want to do is lower the ground just a little bit to account for our displacement, which I think is penetrating a bit too much into the feet here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause this render here, and we will put down a transform right up here by the scene, import for the environment. I'm going to grab actually the entire geo for the environment here. And we will bring this down negative 0 0.055. So you see everything shifted down just a little bit. And now let's take a look at that. Now we get the blue line because that was selected, but I can deselect and that will go away. Now that's looking a little bit better to me. The other thing isn't going to be apparent here in the window, but let's take a look once we clear our render region here. And I'm going to take a snapshot of this. And we'll look at the snapshot here. So one thing we can see in this snapshot is that the environment light is actually not being rendered into the image. We see it here in the window, and that's why we're seeing that nice blue color back here but it's not going to show up in our final image. So what we need to do to enable environment light to actually render into the image here is go into our light, go to the Karma properties here, and choose Set or Create Render Light Geometry. Now I'm going to take another snapshot, and we'll see that the environment light is rendered into it. If you wanted to adjust the depth of field here, you can go into the camera edit node. And if you go to the sampling tab, you can enable any of these to override the depth of field. Uh, disabling it completely would be an f-stop of zero. So if I choose set or create, and we get f-stop zero, depth of field will be completely gone. If we do something small, like I'm gonna say a value of one, you'll see that we've overridden the depth of field that was part of the original camera that's in here. So it's a bit extreme here. I think that the way that it was set up in the scene is right, but if it's not to your liking, go ahead and adjust it. So we will go back to do nothing in there. All right now, what we need to do is go to our Karma Render settings, and we need to choose where we're going to output the picture. I'm just going to call this Mech Scene. We'll go right there. And there is something special that I need to do out here when we go to render it. I want to go into our driver here. I'm going to close this. And what I want to do is change maximum threads here. I want to actually enable that to negative one. So what that's going to do is make sure that there's always at least one CPU thread available for the operating system. Uh, otherwise, the render will basically take over your entire system and it will be faster that way, but you won't be able to interact with your system while it's rendering. So I do like to have this enabled. Now, when it comes to rendering this out, all we have to do at this point is choose 
rendered to disk. If you do that, let me show you what will happen here. And by the way, we should choose our frame range. So we'll do uh, 1 to 160, which is set in the file there. So once I render this to disk, what we should see is that it does start to render. But we're not getting any visual feedback here. We get this popping up. This is because uh, the sh way the shaders are set up, we have displacement shaders that aren't plugged into anything. So it's telling us that it's disabling that. I'm going to clear that and close it. So this actually is rendering an image right now. And I know that the render time on my machine is close to three minutes per frame. But we don't see anything. We have no visual indication here. So I'm going to click Interrupt. And that's OK. So if we want to enable uh, an actual viewable thing that we can use while we're rendering, we should be able to go into our render wrap here into Husk and go to Monitor and choose and play monitor. Now when I choose render, and I choose render to disk, we'll start our render, but we should get an M play window popping up as well. And here is our M play window popping up. So now we can actually monitor our render as it's going and hopefully catch anything that is wrong or is a surprise without having to wait for the whole thing before we can actually see it. I'm going to interrupt this one more time because I wanted to tell you one more thing that's happening here, which isn't quite obvious. So way up above, we had this warning here, and that was telling us that there's no layer path saved. And let me go ahead and stop that. There's no layer path saved for this animation. So when we render this out, Basically, everything's being saved into a temporary directory um, as a USD file and then brought back into Husk for rendering. What's going on here is every time we do a new frame here in the render, it's going to generate a new temporary file. It's going to read that file in and it's going to render it. And that works very well, but it can be a bit slower that way. One thing that you can do is you can choose to render all frames with a single process. And what that will do is up front, it will generate a USD file for your entire frame range as one USD file, and then it will render that. And then it's able to move from frame to frame without having to have that overhead of generating a new file for every frame. It can be a bit quicker. The other thing you can do is before you even go to render is you can strategically figure out where you would like to bake your scene into USD files and then read them back in. For example, if this is a set look dev now, you could bake this to a USD file, read it back in and keep everything the same. It wouldn't have to rewrite this to USD. Same with this area here. Because what we're doing in this specific lesson is meant more as a really quick way to get renders out without having to worry about some of this USD stuff, we're going to skip all of that. And I'm going to keep it just like this with render all frames with a single process. And at this point, I believe I'm ready to choose render to disk.